Awesome. Glad to be here. Uh, want to, you know, it's going to sound a little bit like the Oscars here for a minute because I do want to thank some people, okay? I do want to thank the board here, first of all. I want to thank uh, Chance. I want to thank Coach Tanner, uh, you know, with them getting it done in a timely manner and the way things happen. Uh, I couldn't be happier to be here. Um, I also want to thank Coach Sark. Uh, he really, that place at Texas was special from the standpoint of they got me turned on to college football. Uh, I think, I think it was something that I thought, you know, after that year, I thought I was going to go back to the NFL and 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 get rolling. But uh, uh, I knew after that, I really fell in love with it. Saturdays are special, and uh, want to come help this place be special on Saturday, just like it has been. Um, my wife, who's been uh, like he talked about with, uh, with Coach Reeves, she's been in the game her whole life. She's 58 years old, same as me. And uh, we've been married for 37 years, and she allowed me to continue on my journey as far as football goes, which I really appreciate. Uh, she's fired up. She couldn't be happier. I think she liked the college game on Saturday more than I did, so that's pretty good. Uh, she, uh, she can help us both, Shane, that's for sure. Um, and then really just Shane and his dad. Um, huge effect uh, as far as good people. And really, that's really the main reason that I came here, because of him, because of the loyalty, because of the things that I know are important to him and the, and the type of person he is, I think is uh, really, really special. And it's not like that every place I've been. So happy to be here with that. And um, that's pretty good. That's it. OK. Open up for questions. Uh, if you would, introduce yourself. So uh, Joe, you have a chance to first say whatever you And Joe, David Kloniger with the Charleston Post and Courier. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, you know, getting back into the college game, a big part of it is recruiting. How much of it did you do last year? How much have you already started to get your feet wet here? Well, you really can't recruit as an analyst, obviously. You know, you can't go out on the road and all those things. But um, uh, one of the reasons that I was there was a guy named Jeff Banks, who I think Coach would say is probably one of the top recruiters in the nation. Uh, he, he's done a great job from that standpoint. So just picking his, game, or picking his brain, uh, being around him as much as possible, seeing how the process went. Um, and just like Shane said, I think uh, – you know, it's about relationships, but it's also about making sure that you're competitive and you're trying to win the job, right? You want to make, make sure that you can bring that guy in, and, you know, I, I like that. Uh, I don't have a lot of hobbies. I'm not a golfer anymore. I broke my neck a few years ago, so I really can't play golf that much. Uh, my hobby's ball, and that's part of ball. Uh, the better player you get, the better coach you're going to be, and that's what I think what recruiting is all about, in my opinion. Hey, Joe. Mike Huber, you Gamecock Central. What did what did you learn last year? Because obviously, thirty years in the NFL, I'm sure you learned a lot. But what did you learn from just your first year in college football from a coaching standpoint? Well, not to correct you, but it's thirty four years in the league. So just so you know, okay. But just no, I'm just kidding you. I'm just kidding you, dude. Um, that's right. That's exactly right. Don't feel bad. Um, uh, so what I learned was uh, it, it's hugely about relationships. I mean, with the players, big time but also within the staff. I think it's smaller staffs. Uh, the camaraderie on the staff was really, really special at that place. And what I've witnessed here, it's going to be the same way here. Um, so that was, that was intriguing. That was kind of cool to be around. Um, I'd say the second thing is, is the passion that goes into the week and into the game is unparalleled. Um, in the NFL, it's business, right? It's, it's a business. Let's be honest. It's a business. Um, it's not in college football. It's about making that player not only better as a player, but as a person. And uh, that was very intriguing to me at this time of my career and this time of my life, you know. Um, I told a story to somebody. I had a uh, young man came up to me, heck of a player. He's going to be a really good player for Texas. And he said, hey, Jody, come here, man. I said, what? You know, I thought he was in trouble or something. And uh, he said, uh, I don't know how to tie a tie. And I said, wow. Well, you know who taught me to tie a tie was Coach Reeves. So, pretty cool. Hey, Coach. Pete Iacobelli with the Associated Press here in uh, South Carolina. Nice to meet um, you, Pete. Good to meet you too, Joe. Um, first of all, the last, the, the last special teams guy here, and I went to the same high school. I'm guessing you didn't go to Monsignor Farrell no, High School uh, on no, Staten I didn't. Island. No, I didn't. Okay. But what um, – you know, it seems like college football is entering a different era. It's new, new parameters, NIL, transfer portal, things like that. You're jumping in where maybe some others are saying, you know, maybe I don't want to be part of this anymore. What do you see about the future of college football going forward and able to navigate some of these 
some of these new wrinkles? Well, first of all, um, I think in the kicking game, just talking about special teams overall, I think you can affect the college game a lot more than you can in the NFL. Um, example, uh, against Texas Tech, the last game, we covered seven kickoffs. Right? You don't cover seven kickoffs in a game, or excuse me, in a year in the NFL. So that is intriguing. I think you can affect the game a lot more in college than you can in the NFL right now, in my opinion, in the kicking game. That's the first thing. But the NIL and the collectives and all the stuff that's going on right now, it's, it, it kind of goes back to when free agency really started in the National Football League. And the teams that knew how to navigate that, they rolled. Dallas Cowboys, San Francisco 49ers. The teams that really knew how to operate in that arena, they were the ones that, that got the, uh, the spoils of it. And I think that's what you're entering into right now. I think the better you are at it, the, the, the better you're going to be overall, right? And I do think that, you know, people think that um, that's going to not make it as pure a game. I think it's more pure, a lot more pure in college than it is in the NFL. I mean, I know right now there's nobody in the college game that's tanking. They're not trying to lose games to make sure they get a better draft choice, which to me, that's what you're talking about. That's what it's all about, in my opinion, is winning. Hey, Joe, Jack Veltry, GamecockCentral.com. Nice to meet you, sir. Nice to meet you, dude. Um, just wanted to ask you, you know, after your time with the Rams came to an end, how did te- can you just kind of take us through how Texas kind of came into the picture and everything? And did you have any, you know, potential offers from the NFL to go back and coach there? And, you know, why was it so important to, you know, give college a look? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, after the Rams, I had a couple chances to go to some other places. Um, really, at that time, uh, was just feeling like I wanted to get back with somebody that emphasized special teams, that emphasized being good in the kicking game. And it's not all like that in the NFL. Um, so I wanted to try to go someplace that it was important to. Um, Sark had approached me. Uh, Jeff Banks had approached me. I wanted to take a little time and make the right decision. And uh, it just just worked out great, really, to be honest with you. I mean, that, like I said, you know, when I when I was opening was the that experience allowed me to be sitting in here right now. And just like he said, I had to make a decision in the last couple of weeks. And it was an easy decision, real easy decision, to be honest with you. So I couldn't be more fired up to be here. Hey, Joe, uh, Jordan K with the state newspaper. <clears throat> I know you've you know, had a lot of jobs over your life, but what do you remember working at uh, J&T Lawn Service, and what did that teach you about work ethic? Dude, where'd you get that from? The internet's a crazy I mean, place. that's unbelievable right there. <laughs> J&T Lawn Service. So uh, <laughs> I didn't think I was going to be asked that one. Hold on for a second. Um, no, I, uh, my dad had a lawn mowing service, and uh, he actually got it from another guy, so he said, well, he said, uh, we're going to call it J&T, so that's where it all started. I just, you know, I mean, I came from a blue-collar collar family that hard work was appreciated, and I think it's, it's served me well throughout my career, and, you know, my dad was a big part of that. He helped me out in that respect, and uh, it, it taught me at a young age to be able to work my tail off and try to get results, and that's what I'm going to try to do here. How do you teach that to younger guys, though, to work at that? Well, I think the main thing is is try to give them examples, you know, as much as you can. I think um, – that's very, very important uh, nowadays, I think, as, as a standpoint of, of how do you learn to have a great work ethic. And I think that what we're doing right now in the winter conditioning, uh, I saw it at Texas. I mean, that's another thing that's appealing about this is in the NFL, it's turned into more of a, I don't want to say walkthrough, but there's not as much practice time, not as much uh, strength time, all that kind of stuff. And college football, you can still – get the player better and develop them, in my opinion. So um, I think the harder you work during this time, the more it's going to pay dividends for us down the road. Hey, Coach. Andrew Lyon of Gamecock Digest over on Fan Nation. Welcome to Columbia. Thank you. What does it mean to you to work for a head coach in Shane Beamer who puts so much of an emphasis on special teams on game day? I mean, that's why part of the reason I'm sitting here, because I know what it means. You know, I mean, he was raised from his dad. His dad, like – when he called me to do that clinic, I was like, somebody's messing with me. That's not Frank Beamer. Because at that time, there was nobody that was a better special teams guy, and probably really since. Um, so it was an honor to be there, but I know the importance of it. And really, when you think about it, 
it's all about complementary football. You know, everyone says special teams, offense, defense, but how do we mesh it together? How does it work together? And I think that's that's what you have to look at. I don't I don't want to be looked at as uh, he's got the number one special teams. That's that's great, but did it help us win games? That's the most important thing going forward. I think that that's got to be on our minds and stats and all that other stuff. That's all great, but if we play complementary football the right way, we're going to be just fine. Hey, Coach, Rick Henry with WIS TV here in town. Welcome to Columbia. Thank you. What's the key to getting kids excited about uh, playing special key teams? Well, I think part of it obviously comes from the head coach. Uh, you have to have an organization that wants them to – or that they know the importance of it. Um, and then the other part of it is – that's another thing about college I think that's better than the pro game is you're trying to develop a player that wants to be a great player on offense or defense, Okay. But if they show that they're a good player on teams, a lot of times he gets confidence in them, okay? The defensive coordinator, Clayton, gets confidence in them. Dow gets confidence in them. The receiver coach gets confidence in them. When you see them block tackle, when you see them run with the ball in their hands and do things that are positive, then it has a chance to help them all the way across. And you've got to show them, hey, man, if you do this right, you're going to get more playing time on offense or defense. I don't want to just a guy that's going to just play teams all the time. I mean, yeah, they're great to have, but I want to see a guy graduate. I want to see a guy turn into a great player, and that's part of develop, developing players, in my opinion. Also, what, what stories did uh, Coach Reeves share with you about his time at South Carolina, just his love for the Gamecocks? Uh, he, he just um, – he had a great, a great time here. Uh, he had a chance – just to tell you what kind of person he was, he had a chance after the uh, – all-star game in Georgia. Uh, you know, he wasn't as highly recruited. He came to South Carolina, gave his word to come to South Carolina. He had a chance to go to Alabama, had a chance to go to Georgia. And he said, no, I've given my word to this man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go up there and play for him. And I actually worked for uh, Coach Bass, who was uh, Dan's college coach. He was kind of the one that helped me out when I first got started because Dan had hired him there. But just, you know, just really how great a place this is. Um, he always talked about it in a way that was uh, was special, and uh, I'm glad to be part of this special for sure. Hey, Coach, Elmer Granahan with BigSpur.com. Um, welcome to Columbia. Uh, Thank you. I know you're probably still trying to learn all your players' names and put them <laughs> with faces and all that, but after seeing them on the field this morning and, and maybe from what else you've looked at on tape or whatever, what, what are your impressions of, of the guys you're going to – get to work with this. Season. Oh, I think there's some real talent. I think um, I think they've done a great job of recruiting here and um, you know, it's starting to pay off. You can see that on the field. You saw that on the film that I saw. I mean, last year was last year, but there was a lot of injury situations that occur and that's going to that's going to hurt a lot of teams no matter who you are. So, um, I think that uh, that they've done a great job of getting people here. I'm excited about it. The one thing and I was talking to him about this today is in pro football, you don't you don't have near the numbers at a college practice, it's unbelievable. So I'm trying to study their the way they look, how they, you know, what their names are, all that kind of stuff. They have it easy because they can say, "Hey, coach, we don't have that same thing." So you know, it's uh, that'll be a challenge. But just I think we got a lot of great players here, and hopefully, we can get them going in the right direction. Dave again, uh, coach. Uh, working with the Rams, uh, they had Ernest Jones on the team. Did, did you get to work with him at all? What do you remember about him? Love Ernest. Uh, he's um, very, very cerebral, not only just a good player, but very, very instinctive. Um, I, I don't know. I think he made the Pro Bowl this year. I think he did. Um, he's, a, he's a great kid. I didn't have him as long because he ended up starting, uh, which that's another thing in the NFL. Usually when you get a starter, they usually aren't around very long for you on teams. So, but uh, great kid, uh, excited. Um, he texted me, so I'm, I'm, uh, I think he's glad I'm a Gamecock, that's for sure. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Sorry, Rick. I failed to mention you. Hall of Fame where you were here. For, you remember Spencer Landon. So okay. it's my fault. Well, anytime someone doesn't put me in the old booth, I can't <laughs> <laughs> across the wrong way. Sorry, Hale. Hey, I'll take it as a compliment. It, it was. <laughs>